Hi, I'm Crystal Stranger with Clear.Tax, and I'm here to share a little bit of information about Delaware Franchise Tax. Now, Delaware Franchise Tax is not exactly uplifting. It's not something you can get a tax refund with or is really very fun. Um, what is Delaware Franchise Tax? Uh, it's a tax by the state of Delaware that's really just there for you because you chose to do business in Delaware. Now, a lot of people think Delaware is a tax-free state, but I'm here to tell you that is not true. That's not the case. Um, so why then do people have companies in Delaware? That's always the question. Well, it's really not for tax benefits. It's for corporate ownership and really for investors because Delaware has the strongest investor protections of all the states. And it also doesn't have a state sales tax. So it can be a good place to get started for SaaS and software companies because that lack of a state sales tax makes it a little easier sometimes when you're getting started, right? Um, so there's an important concept to understand before we get into the types of calculations of Delaware franchise tax. You have to understand what the difference is between authorizing a share and issuing a share, right? So when you started your Delaware company or you're gonna start your Delaware company, you choose a number of shares that's the maximum number the company's able to authorize and that you're able to issue in the future, right? Yes, you can always issue more in the future. You can do an additional issuance, but most companies pick that single amount to get started with at the beginning. So typically that number is 10 million. That's the number usually recommended by lawyers for um, like startups that are gonna be seeking investment for a number of reasons but that's not always the best and the reason why is there's two different methods of how to calculate your tax and the first one is your authorized share method now the authorized share method if you have under 5,000 shares you have a minimum fee each year of 175 dollars plus a 50 dollar filing fee so that's only 225 that's pretty low in the scheme of things as far as like different annual states of um, annual fees at different states charge, right? Um, however, if you have 10 million shares, that's an $86,000 annual fee, right? So for the people with 10 million shares formed, it's really not an option. Uh, the other main method is the assumed par value method. And it's a little more complicated to calculate, which is why we created a calculator here at Clear to be able to help you with that. Um, so to, in order to calculate using the assumed par value method, you divide the number of shares that were issued, right? So these are the amounts that you already have given to shareholders, investor shares, um, you know, to people who have bought your company or invested in your company and you've issued shares to them. So you take that number, you divide that by the number of assets at the end of the year of the company, which means the cash in the bank. It means if any like value of any IP that the company might have purchased or owned, assets like computers or land and equipment, whatever you have in your company. Um, you multiply this number by the amount of authorized shares. So you take that divided amount and you multiply it by how many shares, that 10 million amount maybe that you authorize to start the company with, right? Um, if that amount you come up with is under 1 million, then the minimum fee is $400 plus a $50 filing fee. So $450, that's what we most commonly see as a minimum fee. Each million, though, beyond that that gets calculated will be $400 more, up to a $200,000 maximum fee. However, Delaware usually won't calculate the $200,000 some fee. They'll typically then send you the $86,000 bill in the mail which is using that authorized share method. Um, so why do I say $86,000 bill? It's because we see that all too often when people make mistakes filing their Delaware franchise taxes. So what are some of these common mistakes? Well, the main one, or first one I should say, is just simply not paying on time. Delaware franchise taxes due every year by March 1st. There's no extensions available. That's it. That's the date when you have to file your franchise tax return by, right? 
Um, the second big issue is not issuing shares. Like if you don't issue shares at all, if you issue only one share or a small number, um, let's say you're in a vesting arrangement and only 1% of the shares have been issued, you might end up being in trouble at year end, especially if you raised a bunch of money, you have a bunch of cash in the bank at the end of the year, almost no shares issued because all the founders are on vesting arrangements, can be a tricky situation to be in. Um, you also can run into problems with zero par value shares because only the authorized share method is allowed in that case. So then you're really stuck with however many shares you have. So if you have zero par value shares, I recommend having under 5,000 shares, right? If you go that route. Um, the other issue I'll see is with multiple share classes. This is typically if you've done um, a later investment round, like, uh, you know, series A, B, C, D, and you do an additional share authorization. Um, maybe you have a preferred class and a common class of shares for those larger VC investors. Well, each one of those classes of shares gets calculated separately. And then the, they're both amounts of those, um, you know, authorized share capital is going to be multiplied by the total amount of authorized shares, right? So that um, can cause, you know, numbers that get quite high uh, in practice. Um, additional, if you have zero assets for multiple years that you're reporting to Delaware, they're often going to question this and they're going to send a letter out requesting that you send them a copy of your tax return. Uh, for whatever reason, a lot of people don't seem to receive that first letter. Um, honestly, I don't know if it actually exists. Instead, they'll just receive a bill in the mail from Delaware for roughly $86,000. And the answer to that normally is to contact Delaware and then send a copy of the tax return that justifies there really is zero assets in the tax in the in the company at the end of the year right um and it is required for a corporation to file an income tax return every year anyway sometimes people think delaware franchise tax is the only thing but the income tax returns always still required also um and then the last big issue that i see is inconsistent information if one year you say you have 10,000, sorry, sorry, 10 million or 10,000 authorized shares, the next year you say you have 10 million authorized shares, Delaware is definitely going to question that. Also, if one year you say you had 10 million issued, the next year you say you only had 2 million issued, that's going to pull up red flags. They're going to want to see corporate documents to support this, or you're going to have to file amended Delaware franchise tax returns. Um, one last important thing is that in order to close a Delaware corporation, you have to be up to date on Delaware franchise tax. So it's not a good idea to fall behind in this. If your company isn't doing well, you want to stay up to date on this. Um, the penalties and interest will accrue really quickly. And it's important because you're going to have to go in and file all those back Delaware franchise tax returns in order to be able to close your company someday to not have any liability of that, you know, ghost company sitting out there uh, on, uh, on the books with your name attached to it, right? So anyway, um, thanks for uh, tuning in today. Uh, my name is Crystal Stranger again, and we're here at Clear.Tax. If you need any help with this Delaware franchise tax, you have issues or you want us to just help you file, we definitely can file that for you or help take care of the issues with this.